Hi Year 12, this lesson we are going to consider how aluminium metal is extracted from its ore. Now if you're a higher tier student we're on page 121 and foundation tier we're on page 73. Now the first thing that we've got to consider is how we can extract this aluminium. Now you'll see on the screen that I have put the reactivity series of metals and we considered this a way back at the start of our year 12 course. Now when we consider how we extract some metals at the start of year 12, we mainly talked about iron metal. And if you think of way back, we learned that iron metal is extracted from its ore using carbon. Now, if I were to slot carbon in, and if I were to consider the reactivity of carbon, it would slot in just between aluminium and zinc. Now you can see that this carbon is above iron in the reactivity series and that explains why we can use carbon to extract iron from its ore. If we look then at the metal that we want to consider this lesson, aluminium, you'll see that aluminium is above carbon in the reactivity series so therefore carbon is not reactive enough to be able to be used to extract aluminium from its ore. Therefore, Aluminium has to be extracted by a different process and it has to be extracted from its ore by electrolysis. Now just below the title in your booklets, the sentence reads, Electrolysis is used to extract aluminium from alumina, which has been purified from the ore bauxite. Look at the screen just now. What I've got here is a picture of aluminium ore and aluminium ore is called bauxite. Now if you consider the aluminium that we use today, aluminium is found in coke cans, it's found in aluminium foil, it looks very different to how it naturally occurs in the earth as this bauxite or this aluminium ore. Now this bauxite has got to be converted to a substance called alumina before we can extract the aluminium from it. Now alumina is a white powder. So clearly lots of chemical reactions are going to have to be done to this bauxite to convert it into this white powder, which is alumina, which is also called aluminium oxide. Now the first thing that happens is that this bauxite is mined out of the earth. Remember that's how the aluminium metal naturally occurs. It's purified by mixing it with the alkali sodium hydroxide. The alumina in the ore dissolves but the other chemicals don't. Then it's filtered and acid is added to the filtrate, which is then heated to form alumina. And remember the alumina is the aluminium oxide that we get our aluminium from. Now you've got a question there in your booklets. How is bauxite purified to aluminium or to alumina, sorry? We'll write in the answer, okay? Now, We've got a diagram there just below where you were writing and we're going to consider how this electrolysis to extract aluminium from this alumina works. Now we've considered electrolysis before and I'm hoping that you remember that we have got a positive electrode and we've always got a negative electrode. Now the electrolysis cell for aluminium looks a wee bit different to the cells that we are used to. So if you look at the diagram, we've got our positive electrode and we're going to add that label in. And the positive electrode, like we learned before, is called the anode. And you can see in your diagram that we've got three of these positive electrodes. OK, on my screen, there's one, two, three, four, five positive electrodes. But these positive electrodes then are dipping into the electrolyte. Now we've got to go and we've got to look for the negative electrode. Now I'm going to use the blue pen just to show you where this negative electrode is. Okay, so the negative electrode is all the way here and the negative electrode is lying in the electrolysis cell. Okay, so we still have our positive anode we still have our negative electrode, the cathode, but they're just laid out slightly differently. Then if you look at your diagram, we have got our 
bauxite, which is dissolved in this cryolite. We'll talk about that in a wee minute. And we have got, like I said, the anodes dipped into this bauxite. Now we're going to consider the products shortly, but just realise from the diagram that it's the same electrolysis that you have studied before, but it's just laid out slightly differently. Now we're asked then for the overall reaction and we're going to fill in the overall reaction. So we have got, first of all, aluminium oxide, this is in your notes, being converted, like we learned before, we always convert it to the metal and we always get the non-metal gas. Now, in order, before we can leave this equation, we just need to get it balanced. So the oxygens are the tricky bit here. I'm going to pop a 3 in front of the O2 to make 6 oxygens. I'm going to pop a 2 in front of the aluminium oxide to give me 4 aluminiums and 6 oxygens. And I'm going to pop a 4 in front of the aluminium. So you just need to balance that equation in your notes. Before we leave it, we're going to add the state symbols. Remember the aluminium oxide needs to be molten to free the ions up to move. We're going to form some solid aluminium and we're going to form some oxygen gas. Now I've mentioned before that before we can carry out electrolysis, our aluminium ore needs to be molten. The electrolyte needs to be molten. Now in the process of extracting aluminium, we take our aluminium oxide, also called alumina. So this bauxite is purified to alumina by mixing it with sodium hydroxide. The alumina in the ore dissolves, but the other chemicals do not. It is filtered and acid is added to the filtrate, which is then heated to form alumina. Now, once we've got the alumina then, we actually dissolve it in another substance called cryolite before we can carry out electrolysis on it. Ask the question, why is cryolite used? Now, cryolite is just a mineral and we dissolve our alumina in cryolite for two reasons. First of all, it increases the conductivity of the molten aluminium oxide and also it reduces the operating temperature. So if we don't need to have it at such a high temperature, we can save some money. And that makes it slightly cheaper to extract this aluminium from the aluminium ore. And you're going to fill that reason for using cryolite into your notes. Now we've got to go to the now we've got to go to the anode and we've got to consider what's happening. Now, if you look at your notes, we've got a space for observations, and we're going to pop in that the silver aluminium metal is formed at the at the cathode. Okay, the half equations there on the screen. We have got an aluminium ion, it's a three plus ion, gaining three electrons to form an atom of aluminium metal. And then again, you're really just highlighting it for yourself again, the product is aluminium. And remember our oil rig at this cathode, we've always got reduction happening because the aluminium ions are gaining electrons, they're being reduced to form the aluminium metal. Now, if we go then and we consider the anode, and I'm thinking back to the general equation that we balanced before. So there is our aluminium oxide, our alumina. We've already said that the aluminium is formed by reduction at the cathode. But remember, in aluminium oxide, there's bound to be some oxygen as well. We have got to form the oxygen at the anode. Now, the half equation is a wee bit more tricky for it. But first of all, fill me in your observations. We'll see bubbles of colourless gas. And this colourless gas would be the oxygen. Then your half equation is just down below you for you to fill in and your product is oxygen. Now if we consider that half equation in a wee bit more detail, we have got oxide ions from the aluminium oxide and their O2 minus ions going to form a molecule of diatomic oxygen gas. Now because there are two atoms of oxygen in a molecule of oxygen gas, 
we need to have two of the oxide ions to form it. Each oxide ion needs to lose two electrons each and because there are two of them we will lose a total of four electrons. And that half equation, because of the balancing, is probably a wee bit trickier. Now, we've got a sentence there just below where you've been writing that tells us, in reality, the positive electrodes need replaced regularly as the oxygen, oxygen sorry, produced at such high temperatures reacts with the graphite rods to form carbon dioxide or CO2. Now, we're going to fill in the equation just to show that. So this oxygen that we formed reacts with the graphite rods. And remember, graphite is basically just carbon to form carbon dioxide gas. So therefore, in reality, these anodes actually dissolve away over time and they need replaced every so often so that the whole process of electrolysis can keep going and can keep producing more aluminium. Now on page 122, the higher tier students then have got a little box. Just remind yourself at the cathode, we've got reduction happening, rig. At the anode, we've got oxidation happening, oil. Now the last part of this extraction of aluminium that we need to consider is just the environmental effects and why it's so important then that we try to conserve or save our aluminium ore and we try to avoid extracting more and more and more of it. Now we've got a box on page 123 for higher tier or page 75 that asks us to consider this manufacturing process. Now if you read with me, the extraction of aluminium by electrolysis requires a lot of electrical energy, helping to explain why aluminium metal is more expensive than steel. And remember, steel is just, steel comes from iron metal. The high cost of the manufacturing process then is minimised in three ways. Now we've so the first way that we reduce the cost is we take our alumina that we formed from the bauxite ore and we dissolved it in cryolite. And remember we've already filled into our notes that cryolite increases the conductivity and cryolite also reduces the operating temperature. The second reason then is a crust of aluminium oxide actually forms on top of the molten electrolyte which keeps in some heat and we want to keep the heat in to keep the electrolyte from solidifying. The third reason that we're going to write in then is the cost of recycling aluminium is much less than the cost of producing new aluminium from bauxite. So that's why there's such a big drive to recycle our aluminium cans because if we recycle it, we're saving the raw material and we're also reducing the cost of making new aluminium. We finally got a box to fill in at the bottom. It's pretty self-explanatory. Recycling aluminium uses less energy than is needed to extract it from its ore. You're going to fill in bauxite. We're going to keep writing. It minimises pollution and it reduces the amount of the ore needed. Remember, the fact that this electrolysis uses lots of electricity means that the electricity has got to come from somewhere, probably from burning fossil fuels. And we know from our year 11 studies that burning fossil fuels produces all sorts of different pollution.